families, creating a lifetime of memories. Sadly, some families are denied these important moments due to the sad practice of alienation. These are Families Divided. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Families Divided TV. In this episode, Dr. Kathleen Ray talks about the relationship between being blindsided by alienation and the nature of stress, the numerous types of physiological and psychological changes that can occur and how long-term exposure to stress and alienation cases can lead to serious health conditions. Dr. Ray provides strategies to help rise above the stress. Of significance, she shares information about an upcoming wellness retreat she specifically designed for alienated parents and grandparents. Some highly acclaimed PA experts from across the United States and Canada are attending and presenting on uplifting legal and mental health topics of interest. Plus, the PA experts will be engaging in numerous activities with attendees at this very special wellness retreat. We're looking forward to this episode with Dr. Kathleen Ray, and we're going to bring this to you right after these messages. Divorce and co-parenting are a major life interruption for families, especially the kids, but also for parents and grandparents. And it's even worse in blame-filled, high-conflict cases. When parents engage in alienation by turning the kids against the other parent or grandparents, kids suffer. They're denied the opportunity to build the four big skills necessary for future resilience. New Ways for Families online class can help. Parents learn to use our popular Biff and Ear skills to calm the conflict and stop the hostile emails and texts. And we even have a class for kids and parents to learn together. Research shows a 75% improvement in joint parental decision making after this course is taken, plus overall improvements for kids' well-being. Don't wait to make this affordable investment in your children's future and improve your well-being too. Start learning new ways for your family today at conflictplaybook.com. Hello, it's wonderful to be here with you. Tonight's topic is called Blindsided by Alienation. And if you are an alienated parent or grandparent, a mental health professional, or a supportive other, my goal is to offer you numerous takeaways from watching this entire show. Let's go over the agenda. First, I'll talk about the relationship between being blindsided by alienation and the nature of stress. The numerous types of physiological changes that alienated parents and grandparents experience, the types of pressures that alienated parents and grandparents undergo in the here and now, and how long-term exposure to stress in alienation cases can lead to serious health conditions. I'll share some strategies to help you rise above the stress. And of significance, I'll also share information about an upcoming wellness retreat that I've specially designed and am hosting for alienated parents and grandparents. Some very well-known and highly respected parental alienation experts from across the United States and Canada are attending and making presentations on uplifting legal and mental health topics of interest. Plus, my colleagues and I plan to engage in numerous activities with you at this very special retreat. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to see that this retreat is not just a vacation, it's a transformative experience like no other. Okay, let's get started. First, whether you're an alienated parent or grandparent, there is no doubt in my mind that at the start of the alienation process, you must have consciously or 
unconsciously felt blindsided among other emotions before you even realized what the heck was going on. You also likely soon recognized that the seeds of parental alienation sprout quickly. And as a result, whether you're experiencing mild, moderate, or severe alienation at this point in time, you likely continue to feel blindsided by all the horrible, toxic, manipulative, sickening things that the alienating parent does to you and your children or grandchildren. Stress is something that each and every one of us faces on a daily basis, some more than others. We all need a certain amount of stress in our lives to remain alive. Quite simply, the stress response is a natural, physical reaction to the perception that we are experiencing some type of threat. Consequently, stress is inevitable when you're being alienated by your former spouse and or other family member. Having the ability to rise above this stress first requires a greater understanding of the nature of stress. What is so fascinating from both physiological and psychological viewpoints is that most individuals feel less able to cope when the stress response is triggered. So why is that? Well, the answer is that the stress response developed millions of years ago when the greatest threats to well-being involved violent life or death situations. Back then, as a hunter or a gatherer, you might have been attacked and killed by a large predator in the bush, or you might have been attacked by another tribe in the jungle when you least expected it. Your greatest odds for survival likely involved one of two choices, fight as hard as you possibly could or run away as fast as you possibly could. There's a risk that you would not have survived if you chose to do nothing. That is why the stress response is also called the fight flight, meaning run, or freeze, do nothing, response. You may have heard of the term survival of the fittest, meaning that those who fought the hardest or ran the fastest were more likely to live and to pass along their characteristics to their offspring. Therefore, the trigger for the stress response to be activated is a belief or perception that we are under some type of threat or endangerment, whether real or imagined. Numerous physiological changes take place when you perceive a threat and your stress response is activated. When you're blindsided, you tend to experience increased heart rate to help pump blood more efficiently to your working muscles increased pulse rate and heart pounding, increased respiration to get additional oxygen from the environment, increased blood sugar levels due to the release of glucose from your liver, increased blood supply to your large muscles through the widening of blood vessels in those areas. Decreased blood supply to your digestive system and skin through the narrowing of blood vessels in those areas can occur. Increased flood of stress hormones, including adrenaline and cortisol, are also released into the bloodstream. Immune and sexual functions are suppressed, and so much more. Additionally, numerous emotional and behavioral changes occur during the stress response. For example, 
The stress response makes you feel alert. The stress response helps you stay focused. It helps you stay energetic. It gives you extra strength to defend yourself. The stress response helps you rise to meet various challenges and helps keep you on your toes. The stress response helps sharpen your concentration and can literally help save your life. The stress response can also voluntarily suppress your emotions and can trigger fear and negativity and so much more. Long-term exposure to stress can lead to very serious health conditions, including, but not limited to, high blood pressure, heart attacks, heart disease, strokes, infertility, digestive problems, sleep difficulties, obesity, autoimmune diseases, certain types of cancers, skin conditions, increase of the aging process, anxiety disorders, depressive disorders, and various types of pain and pain disorders throughout the body. The types of pressures that you experience in the here and now are real. And due to the widespread damage stress can cause, it's important to recognize what your own limits are. Just how much stress is considered too much actually differs from one person to another. Some individuals can roll with the punches while others will fall apart at the slightest annoyance. Still, others seem to thrive on the challenge and excitement of a high stress environment. Your ability to tolerate stress as an alienated parent or grandparent will depend on many factors. Take a few moments to consider the types of obstacles and or pressures you are currently facing on a regular basis. Let's do a little self-reflection here. Consider one of the situations in which you felt yourself becoming stressed in the past week. Take a moment to think about it. Besides feeling stressed, what other feelings did you experience at the time? Can you recall feeling like your life was out of control? Or you were out of control? Or at least feeling out of control? Can you recall wanting to escape the situation? Can you recall wanting to run away and or scream really loud to help cope with the situation? Can you recall wanting to attack someone verbally, emotionally, and or perhaps even physically? For example, phone your former spouse and chew him or her out for not letting you see your child during your court ordered visiting time. What would the likely consequences be of those particular actions? Were you able to rise above the stress, especially when you felt so blindsided by whatever the stressor may have been? If so, what did you do? If you just engaged in this exercise with me, I encourage you to give yourself a great big pat on the back or hug yourself. Okay, now let's talk about strategies to help you rise above the stress. Here's my first tip. Build a strong network of supportive friends and family members to act as a buffer against the stressors in your life. Do your very best not to isolate yourself and feel lonely. The greater the loneliness and isolation you experience, the greater you will be vulnerable to more stress. Increase your sense of control. Given that alienated parents and grandparents are 
highly vulnerable to stress. It's not uncommon to feel like things are out of control. And at a time like this, it's important that you have confidence in yourself and your ability to be able to influence certain situations or events. Have enough self-confidence to recognize that you can and will persevere through the obstacles and challenges in your life. Believe in yourself. Believe in your children or grandchildren's best interests. They need you in their lives. And I want to impress upon you that they really deep down know that. They're just not able to show or exhibit that to you or anyone associated with you for as long as they remain under the toxic umbrella of the alienator. Engage in regular check-ins on your attitude and outlook. It's important to maintain an optimistic attitude. Accept that none of us can have complete control over what happens in our lives. Embrace the challenges and changes that have taken place. Accept that change is a part of life. Consider whether or not you are looking at your personal situation in a positive light and with a positive attitude. Be aware of how many times per day you think or say negative things about yourself, your ex, your children, or others. Ensure you've got a good sense of humor. Laughter truly can be one of your best prescriptions for coping purposes. Do regular check-ins on your emotions. Alienated parents and grandparents are extremely vulnerable to stress when they don't know how to deal with their feelings. Suppressing your feelings is not healthy, nor is getting extremely agitated, angry, and doing something foolish. Learn how to calm and soothe yourself whenever you're feeling sad, mad, frustrated, blindsided, betrayed, afraid, or angry. You can make healthy choices. Remember, it's not what you have, it's what you do with what you have. And you truly have the ability to bring your emotions into balance. In doing so, it will help you bounce back from adversity. Ask yourself, am I in control of my stress or is my stress in control of me? Be knowledgeable and prepared. The more knowledge you have about a potential stressful situation, including how long it will likely last and what to expect, the easier it will be for you to cope. For instance, if you go to court with a realistic picture of what to expect when your former spouse's attorney claims something horrible that completely blindsides you, for example, claims you physically abused your oldest daughter or granddaughter during your last visit and you did no such thing then have a valid argument prepared for the judge. Then there's a much greater chance that the judge will recognize that parental alienation is occurring. Give yourself an energy boost through eating healthy, nutritious meals on a regular and consistent basis. Engage in regular exercise. Studies show that individuals who participate in regular aerobic or anaerobic exercise often reveal less stress and anxiety than those who don't. Choose a variety of physical activities and recreational activities that you enjoy or will at least tolerate. Three to four times a week is best. Don't overdo it. And if you haven't exercised for some time, start by enjoying regular walks and 
slowly increasing your pace. Of course, you'll want to consult with your physician if it's been a while since you've engaged in any type of exercise. But all in all, once you do, you will notice the physical and psychological benefits of engaging in regular exercise quite quickly. Here's another tip. Keep your caffeine intake at a minimum. Although caffeine, coffee in particular, may help you feel more alert and help to carry you through difficult days, it stimulates your nervous system. Additionally, caffeine is hidden in numerous products that many of us enjoy, including, but not limited to, colas and other soft drinks, black, green, or other teas, decaf coffee, dark and milk chocolate, Foods containing chocolate, such as chocolate ice cream, energy drinks, certain herbal stimulants, certain prescribed medications, certain over-the-counter drugstore items, and coffee-flavored foods, such as coffee yogurt and iced coffee-flavored drinks. Any type of caffeine will block your adenosine neurotransmitters which are what promotes sleep. Results of too much caffeine in our systems results in sleep problems, restlessness, irritability, nervousness, exhaustion, muscle tremors or jitters, nausea, heartburn, increased or irregular heart rate, dehydration and thirstiness, and addiction. Here's another tip. Learn to breathe effectively and practice other relaxation strategies often. Mindfulness, meditation, yoga, progressive muscle relaxation, or guided imagery. Oh, and remember this too. It's important to watch your alcohol consumption and any other substance use. Tobacco, prescription drug use, or any illicit drug use. You know, it might seem like a good idea to have a drink, a smoke, or even a toke to cope, relax, sleep, but drug and alcohol misuse can easily turn into abuse and dependence for some individuals. And this is especially true if there is a family history of addiction. It's important to become self-educated on the immediate, short-term, and long-term effects of any substance. And in the event that you or someone else who cares about you believes that you have a problem, it's important to seek help as soon as possible. Talk to your physician or a mental health professional. Watch for any other patterns of addictive behaviors. Besides being cautious about engaging in any type of mind-altering addictive behaviors, such as drinking and drugging, watch out for mood-altering addictive behaviors too. Problem gambling, sexual acting out, compulsive spending and overspending, compulsive shopping, disordered eating, and ongoing codependency in relationships are all examples of mood-altering addictive behaviors. If you easily become thrilled by any of the aforementioned mood-altering addictive behaviors, I encourage you to talk to your doctor or a mental health professional as soon as possible. Engage in a regular sleep pattern. You know, recent surveys conducted by the National Sleep Foundation showed that at least 40 million Americans suffer from varying sleep disorders. And stress is the number one reason for short-term sleep issues. By engaging in a regular sleep-wake cycle daily, 
you will feel more alert, refreshed, and energized, among other things. In the event that you are experiencing sleep disturbances, again, I encourage you to consult with your physician or a mental health professional. I also urge you to use a journal daily to write out your thoughts and feelings. Also, journals are really essential to keep track of various situations or events that take place between you, your former spouse, or perhaps your, your past daughter-in-law or son-in-law, your children, grandchildren, criminal justice system, and so on. And if deemed appropriate, share your journal entries with your attorney for legal purposes. Here's another tip. Blog. One of the benefits of social media is the ability to blog. And many bloggers or vloggers, they sell products, they network with others who share the same profession, and they use blogging or vlogging for job searches and so on. Blogging or vlogging has also become a very popular way to post online journals and diaries. And I have encouraged many alienated parents and grandparents to consider blogging their stories about family alienation online. Did you know that one benefit of blogging is finding out that you're not in an isolated situation? It's true. Additionally, blogging offers the ability for you to meet other individuals who will offer you support just as you may to them. Many alienated parents have reported that it's validating to blog or vlog because there are so many other parents out there who comment on understanding the profound pain of losing a child or grandchild through alienation. And in some cases, I've also seen alienated children reconnect with their alienated parent from reading their parents' blogs. Here's another tip. Join a PA online support group if you haven't already, or an in-person support group. And if one is available in your area, find one. And if there isn't an existing support group in your area, hey, why not consider starting one? This can be easily accomplished through organizations online like Meetup. Next tip, remember how important it is to balance your life. The key to functioning as effectively as you can during this very difficult and painful time is to do your best to experience a balanced lifestyle. And if all else fails, please seek counseling from a well-qualified mental health professional who is experienced and well-trained in working with alienation cases. Experiencing alienation as a parent or grandparent is an incredibly difficult and challenging period in one's life. Throughout this painful process, it can feel like a never-ending battle as you navigate through all the contentious issues that arise. It's easy to lose sight of self-care amidst all the chaotic turmoil. And that's where my specially designed wellness retreat comes into play. I have designed this retreat specifically for alienated parents and grandparents to take a much needed break unwind, recharge, and start anew. Please watch this video to learn more about this wonderful opportunity.
There are a couple of other important things I need to add. First, please note that alienated parents and grandparents can choose to come alone or bring a loved one or supportive other. Second, enrollment is limited. And to avoid disappointment, I encourage you to register for the early bird rate as soon as possible. And third, keeping in mind currency market rates can fluctuate. One US dollar is currently equal to $1.37 Canadian. That means the early bird rate for the core wellness retreat is only $622 US. And lastly, believe me, this upcoming retreat will crack the code to turning a well-deserved vacation to a fabulous location into a personal transformation specifically designed for alienated parents and grandparents. If you or someone you know is interested and want to get in on it, here's my email for you to let me know. Dr. Kathleen Ray at gmail.com. That's spelt D R K R E A Y at gmail.com. Thank you so very much for watching this show. And thank you, Elaine, for having me on. Bye for now. On our next episode, activist Brian Martin discusses turning the tables on false allegations, a bill in the process.